Wolves that were most fearless in approaching human habitation were able to take advantage of scavenging around human habitations. And so there was a natural selection. The wolves are kind of selecting themselves for tameness. And they gradually became more dog-like as a result. And the fox experiment showed the same thing being, in a sense, reenacted centuries, m- millennia later. Hmm. Bob Wayne in UCLA, UCLA has done the genetics of dog. And at one stage he was saying they go back with humans about 100,000 years. Now I think he's come down to about 33,000 which, of course, is enormous when you consider how long we've been around as modern species. But um, one of the things, going back to those those numbers of complexity, uh, what I was thinking of more to do with uh, the odds of people sitting in chairs like that is the odds of my being like I am and those dogs being like they are. In other words, the uniqueness that is sometimes looked at of something turning out like it does. It's got to turn out somehow. And the one thing that I love about the dog story is neoteny. In other words, what seems to be selecting for there is that playfulness or sociability is a a short span in the wolf, but it's far longer in the, the dog, as we know. Now, there's also an example, another picture in the book, which I found startling because you you question whether it was straight, is of the upright, serious-looking young chimp which looks like on the way to being a neotenous human, you know, that naked ape of your mate Desmond Morris's. Tell us about the picture of the young chimp and what made you wonder whether it was for real. Well, perhaps we ought to talk about what what neoteny is uh, as well. Um, Neoteny is a well-known phenomenon in evolution whereby juvenile characteristics are retained into adulthood. And so, as Robin says, it looks as though what happened with dogs and probably what happened with the, um, with the Russian, with the Siberian foxes too, was that puppy-like characteristics, cub-like characteristics, are retained into, into adulthood. And so if you, if you select for tameness, what you're inadvertently doing is probably delaying maturity or, if you like, bringing sexual maturity earlier in life so that juvenile characteristics are still present. And tameness would be one of those juvenile characteristics. And so you get a whole lot of other juvenile characteristics. Now, humans are thought to be neotenous apes. So that it's certainly undeniable that the skull or the head of a baby chimp is far more like an adult human than an adult chimp is like an adult human. Another way to put this, as Aldous Huxley did in a science fiction context, was to suggest that if, if humans could somehow be allowed to live for, say, two or three hundred years, we would end up looking like chimps, or looking, because we would have grown up. I mean, we are juvenile apes, and we would then, we would then um, grow up. Now, the photograph in the book, it's a famous photograph of an adult chimp and a baby chimp, and the baby chimp photograph is sitting absolutely bolt upright, Um, and it looks very, very human indeed. It looks actually far more human than baby chimps really do, and that's what Robin's referring to, that it looks as though the photograph kind of doctored. I mean, if if not deliberately doctored, it's sort of mounted. The stuffed specimen was mounted in a very, very human way. The point still remains that juvenile chimps are much more human-like than adult chimps. But this particular photograph, which is often used to illustrate the point, probably has, it's it's a bit too good to be true. It's very pretty though, isn't it? I want to tell you a short story that I broadcast last week, which uh, I found rather delicious. Uh, It actually came out of the AAAS meeting in San Diego. And we had a veterinary scientist belonging to the US Navy who had been studying dolphins, and they had a captive colony over 40 years, and they took their physiology systematically and discovered that they had a kind of diabetic reaction. In other words, they had a resistance to insulin. And the point that she was trying to make, and she published a paper on this, is that she was looking for ways to illustrate our own diabetic tendencies. Now, you probably won't be surprised to know that this book reflects various problems we have in our design. 
the fact that we're diabetic and 